Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Hello and welcome to Share Talk. Today I'm joined by Angus Forrest, the CEO of Drums, with the epic code DRUM, which I find uh, extremely witty and memorable. How are you today, Angus? I'm very well, Zach. Thank you very much for uh, your intro. Uh, right. Uh, um, basically, you've just been on the uh, in this uh, current guise. You've just been on the stock market for uh, uh, for a, for a very short period. Um, announcement yesterday from Drums. Could you just take us uh, through that announcement from yesterday? Okay, we've been on the on the market for since the first of July, and this announcement of an investment in acuity risk management is our first investment. And I think that that investment is typifies what we're looking for. What we're looking for is established businesses with revenues and profits, which um, are run by really good people uh, and technically excellent, that their products uh, will be validated by use with uh, blue chip customers. But uh, their weakness is in commercialising their excellence. And this, we believe, is quite common with uh, software companies. It's probably not only software companies, but um, uh, my area of expertise is in software companies. And we look to uh, make a number of changes and provide expertise in how to change and how to improve uh, the business, the quality of the business, uh, as far as the commercials are concerned, so that over a two to three year period, we are able to uh, transform the value uh, for the benefit of uh, drums shareholders, as well as the uh, existing shareholders in the business. Right. I, I mean, so it, it, to make it colloquial, um, you, you're, you're really saying that the premise behind drums is that uh, uh, nerdy, techie people don't make good salespeople and they don't really make good business people either, let's say. Uh, uh, that, that's a bit derogatory about, <laughs> about um, uh, uh, software engineers. But I think that when you start a business, it is hard to uh, realise the true value of your product. It is hard to make customers pay a proper uh, price uh, to focus on uh, the the building of the business as well as uh, building of the product and, and paying all the bills at the end of each month. Uh, what we're doing is relatively simple items, but combined together they should be able to enable a software business to grow um, in size at least fivefold in a three-year period and we should be able to transform the value because not only uh, will the value be higher because of the scale uh, but it'll also be more profitable it'll have got more customers it will demonstrate significant growth uh, all features which are very attractive to trade buyers right i just wanted to look at the look just look at the rns uh, uh, that you you released and i think the two key points uh, which look uh, positive um, are one that uh, Acuity was actually um, uh, acquired, was, was owned by, by Siemens uh, at one point. Uh, and then the second point is that in terms of uh, the deal, um, you know, you're paying uh, half a billion pounds for 20% of it, and you could get a bit more, five, another 5% for another 125. But the con as a condition of the transaction, you will be a director of Acuity, which, I mean, seeing historical examples, uh, taking a, a minority investment in a company uh, on any in any sector, if you don't have the control uh, with that um, purchase, you tend to be a backseat driver. So you can't your you can't your effort you can't really change or or control that uh, that situation. So that ties in with what you're saying. Uh, I, I want to just correct one thing: Siemens never owned Acuity. There right. was a previous consulting business right. uh, which was which was owned by Siemens, bought by Siemens. And the uh, 
people who ran that business left to found, found Acuity. They captured what they provided as consultants in the software, um, and, um, and that's how Acuity was formed. Right. But I mean, I think I was hinting really that it was it's a blue chip, it's a blue chip purchase it's a blue chip product, uh, uh, which is you know used in obviously by big name companies. It, it, that is absolutely correct. And what we like about uh, one of the many things we like about Acuity is that many of the blue chip customers have renewed year after year, so they see a lot of value in it. And we have been pushing up the prices. Uh, significantly and we have not met resistance from customers uh, about uh, about paying higher prices um, we as well as me being a director we do go into this and all other businesses with a shareholder agreement uh, so that we are able to um, influence and stop uh, things if they appear to be going wrong Right, and and just I mean to, to tie in with the you know the other things that we see in the in the space in terms of tech investing companies, they are they 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 tend to acquire assets which will require a lot of development, so that costs them a lot of money, or they acquire assets which don't actually produce any revenue, so uh, they end up having to keep uh, 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 sort of putting their hands in shareholders' pockets uh, to keep going. I mean that's that's obviously something you're trying to divert from. But we do not want to do that. Once we put our investment in, we want the business to be able to continue without further investment from its own resources. In the case of Acuity, uh, it has uh, it, it, it has been profitable and cash generative, and most of these businesses will be cash generative because they're trading on a SaaS model. That's software as a service, whereby you get paid. Uh, annually up front uh, and that's obviously very good for cash flow um, gross margin will be 90 percent or so so almost everything you obtain from a sale uh, is able to cover the overheads which of course are substantial but it does mean that we will not have to keep uh, drip feeding these businesses Right, and then the, the, the final aspect is um, tech uh, companies, again, tech investment companies tend to get bogged down with uh, their assets. They have a portfolio, let's say five or six or ten or whatever pro uh, products, and uh, they just keep acquiring more and, ne and never selling them. You know, they, they are either not able to or they feel the time is not right or uh, there's some other excuse. Uh, that's, again, something that you're going to shy away from. Um. My belief uh, is that we should uh, enable ourselves to obtain uh, an exit route, whether that be by sale of the company or whether it be um, by an IPO. And I've had considerable experience of uh, both uh, IPOs and trade sales over the years. And um, uh, that is where we're aiming to get the characteristics of the company in a shape to maximize the value uh, over 24 to 36 months. Right. So finally, you've been on the market a couple of months. You've done your first deal. Uh, what do you think, what do you envisage the pace of, of deal making or deal flow maybe? I think we probably should try for doing two or three deals a year. We must endeavor to make sure that we each one is a success uh, and we don't have unlimited resources so um, there are really two of us uh, working away and if um, we we take the pain up front uh, because Normally, the change is the most difficult to achieve, uh, and that is right at the start. Um, we could probably do two or three a year. Okay, well, that sounds like uh, something for us to look forward to and keep an eye out for. Uh, Angus Forrest, uh, CEO at Drums, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Zach. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.